Ho, 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 and hello, my fellow history nerds. This is your host, Dan Romagno, and you are listening to The Past Less Traveled. To start this holiday special off, I want to thank all of you for tuning in and for bearing with me during my recent hiatus from podcasting. I've been very busy as of late with school. I'm finishing up my bachelor's degree in finance. I also got engaged in June and have been wedding planning. Very exciting stuff. On top of all of this, my fiancé and I are also in the process of buying our first house. Needless to say, it's been a busy couple of months, and podcasting, although I thoroughly enjoy it, has been placed on the back burner. Now, as the semester winds to an end, and before I prepare for the spring semester, where I begin my master's degree in education with a concentration in social studies, I have found that I have time during this break, and thought I was overdue for a new episode. What better way to break back into the podcasting game than with a holiday special? Before we dive into our Christmas topic, I would like to do a special shout out to Mrs. Katz. Mrs. Katz is my cousin Christopher's middle school teacher. Christopher also has a keen interest in history and was discussing his interest with his teacher, Mrs. Katz. Mrs. Katz's initial response to his interest was to recommend her favorite history podcast, which so happens to be none other than The Past Less Traveled. Needless to say, my cousin was surprised, and upon learning of the story, I was surprised as well. It excites me tremendously that my podcast has accumulated the reach that it has, and I am thrilled that people other than my family actually listen to it. So thank you, Mrs. Katz, for listening and recommending my podcast to others, and I hope you enjoy this holiday special. Without further ado, I am pleased to introduce today's Christmas special topic. Today's topic was held in mid-December starting the 17th of December of the Julian calendar, and expanded with festivities through the 23rd of December. It was an ancient Roman pagan festival, honoring the agricultural god Saturn. The celebration that occurred are the source of many of the traditions we now associate with Christmas. This is a story of gift-giving, merry-making, and role-playing. This is the story of Saturnalia. Saturnalia is without a doubt the most popular holiday on the ancient Roman calendar, especially for the enslaved population, but we'll get into that a bit later. According to the poet Catullus, it was the best of days, and the Neoplatonist philosopher Porphyry interpreted the feelings associated with Saturnalia as symbolizing the freeing of souls into immortality. Saturnalia derived from older farming-related rituals of midwinter and the winter solstice, especially the practice of offering gifts or sacrifices to the gods during the winter sowing season. It held theological importance for some Romans, who saw it as a restoration of the ancient golden age, when the world was ruled by Saturn. To understand Saturnalia, you must first have a grasp on who it is that is being celebrated, and why. In Roman mythology, Saturn was an agricultural deity, who is said to have reigned over the world in the Golden Age, when humans enjoyed the spontaneous bounty of the earth without labor in a state of innocence. The Golden Age represents the end of the hunter-gatherer life of man and the beginning of civilization. The history of agriculture is the story of humankind's development and cultivation of processes for producing food, feed, fiber, and other goods by the systematic raising of plants and animals. Prior to the development of plant cultivation, human beings were hunters and gatherers. The knowledge and skills of learning to care for the soil and growth of plants advanced the development of human society, allowing clans and tribes to stay in one location generation after generation. Archaeological evidence indicates that such developments occurred 10,000 or more years ago. Because of agriculture, cities, as well as trade relations between different regions and groups of people developed, further enabling the advancement of human societies, cultures, and technologies. Agriculture was highly regarded in Roman culture and built on techniques pioneered by the Sumerians with a specific emphasis on the cultivation of crops for trade and export. 
Romans laid the groundwork for the manorial economic system involving serfdom, which flourished in the Middle Ages. By the 5th century, Greece had started using crop rotation methods and had large estates, while farms in Rome were small and family-owned. Rome's contact with Carthage, Greece, and the Hellenistic East in the 3rd and 2nd centuries improved Rome's agricultural methods. Roman agriculture reached its height of productivity and efficiency during the late Republic and early Empire. According to legend, Saturn settled in Latium, the future site of Rome. His arrival was welcomed, and Saturn quickly established himself there, even founding the nearby city of Saturnia. According to ancient myth, Saturn ruled Latium wisely during its golden age, a time of great prosperity and peace. It was during this time that he became more closely associated with agriculture, hence the reason for his typical depiction in art holding a scythe. He instructed the people on the basic principles of farming and viticulture, which is the production of grapes. He also helped the locals to rid themselves of their barbaric customs, and instead adopted a more civic and moral lifestyle. While historians argue over the origins of Saturn and his role in Roman mythology, his place in Roman history is remembered for two items, his temple and his festival, the latter of the two we will be exploring shortly. First, I'd like to take a minute to hear from a fellow podcast that I'm sure you all will enjoy. Welcome, Accessible Art History. Hey there, my name is Annalisa, and I'm the founder of Accessible Art History. As a part of my content offerings, I produce a podcast. For the first several seasons, I will be discussing 50 objects that shape the history of Western art. From prehistoric cave paintings to contemporary art, I'll be covering it all. The podcast was designed for everyone, from the casual couch historian to a museum's expert. It all fits within the larger mission of Accessible Art History to create a space for art history lovers, students, and anyone who is curious to explore all periods of art history and human creation. New episodes drop every Monday on your favorite podcast platform. Make sure to follow the Instagram page for all updates at accessible.art.history. Annalisa from Accessible Art History is a weekly listen for me, and I always learn something new, even if it's about a piece of art I'm already familiar with. I'd also like to introduce you all to my favorite podcast listening platform, HistoryPods.com. HistoryPods is a real-time feed of new releases from indie history podcasts. Over 170 podcasters are featured from all over the world. This platform allows history podcasters and history fans to discover each other while avoiding all those annoying algorithms. You can follow them on Twitter at Pods of History and donate via patreon.com slash historypods. Now let's get back to the celebration. During Saturnalia, work and business came to a halt. Citizens and slaves would greet one another with a hefty Yo Saturnalia! Schools and courts of law and the normal social patterns were suspended. People decorated their homes with wreaths and other greenery and shed their traditional togas in favor of colorful clothes, known as synthesis. Instead of working, Romans spent Saturnalia gambling, singing, playing music, feasting, socializing, and giving each other gifts. Wax taper candles called suri were common gifts during Saturnalia. The gift of candles were used to signify light returning after the solstice. Some Christian historians argue that there were even gladiator fights held during the festivities as well. Presiding over the festival was a mock king, the king of misrule. The tradition of a king of misrule was carried throughout centuries and cultures. In England, it was called the Lord of Misrule. The title was known in Scotland as the Abbot of Unreason, and in France as the Prince de Sots. The king of misrule was an officer appointed to preside over the festivities and was to be in charge of all the revelries, which often included drunkenness and wild partying. This leads us to what most believe to be the most significant aspect of the celebration. The person appointed to be the king of misrule was a slave. Yep, you heard me right, the king of misrule was a slave. A great explanation of this role reversal was documented by the ancient Roman historian Justinus, 
who credits Saturn with being a just and fair king, stating that the first inhabitants of Italy were the Aborigines, whose king, Saturnus, is said to have been a man of such extraordinary justice that no one was a slave in his region, or had any private property, but all things were common to all, and undivided, as one estate for the use of every one, in memory of which way of life it has been ordered that at the Saturnalia slaves should everywhere sit down with their masters at the entertainments, the rank of all being made equal. Because of this, Saturnalia was characterized by role reversals and behavioral license. Slaves were treated to a banquet of the kind usually enjoyed by their masters. Ancient sources differ on the circumstances. Some suggest that the master and slave dined together, while others indicate that the slaves feasted first. Or, and this one makes me especially happy, that the masters actually served the food to their slaves. Saturnalian license also permitted slaves to disrespect their masters without the threat of punishment. It was a time for free speech. The Augustan poet Horace calls it December liberty. Everyone knew, however, that the leveling of the social hierarchy was temporary and had limits. No social norms were ultimately threatened because the holiday would come to an end. Thanks to the Roman Empire's conquest in Britain, and the rest of Europe from the 2nd century BC to the 4th century AD, today's Western cultures derive many of their traditional celebrations of midwinter from Saturnalia. The Christian holiday of Christmas, especially, owes many of its traditions to the ancient Roman festival, including the time of year Christmas is celebrated. The Bible does not give a date for Jesus' birth. In fact, some theologists have concluded that he was born in spring as suggested by references to shepherds and sheep in the Nativity story. But by the 4th century AD, Western Christian churches settled on celebrating Christmas on December 25th, which allowed them to incorporate the holiday with Saturnalia and other popular pagan midwinter traditions. Before the end of the 4th century, many of the traditions of Saturnalia, including gift-giving, singing, lighting candles, feasting, and merrymaking had become absorbed by the traditions of Christmas as we know them today. I hope you all enjoyed this past less traveled holiday special and have learned something new about the origins of the holiday that we all hold so near to our hearts. As always, please like, comment, share, and rate this podcast on any of the platforms that you may use to listen. It really does help. I wish all of you a happy Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Yuletide, Christmas, and of course, a very happy Saturnalia. This has been your host, Dan Romagno, and thank you for listening to The Past Less Traveled. Remember, we are all trapped in history, and history is trapped in all of us.